All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Math Lesson 4. Today we're talking all about comparing whole numbers. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we got in front of us today, okay? First thing we want to talk about is the three comparison symbols. And when you read those comparison symbols, you have to read them left to right. And maybe back in first grade, second grade, third grade, they might have told you this bit. I know my teacher did. The crocodile's mouth opens to the largest number, right? But now that we're stepping it up a notch in fifth grade, we actually will sometimes have to write these symbols off of words. And if you remember going left to right, it should help you out. Because greater than. Going left to right, the left side is greater than the right side. And less than, going left to right, the left side is less than the right side. Or equal to, going left to right, the left side is equal to the right side. So, the crocodile's mouth opening to the largest number will work, but sometimes you will actually have to know how to write those. So, let's jump right into some sample problems. Here's one that says, write 564, 645, and 465 in order from least to greatest. Now, every so often, kids will get a bit confused and they'll think this is one number. They'll think of it as 564,645. This is actually three separate sets of numbers, right? And if you have to go and arrange things in least to greatest, always start by looking at the first digit, if they're all equals. Here I have five in the hundreds place. There I have six in the hundreds place, and here I have four in the hundreds place. This guy isn't so tough. Everybody should be able to know it pretty easily, right? What's my least largest number? 465, isn't it? What's going to be the next smallest number? Would be 564. And then the greatest number I have here is 645, correct? Keep on moving. You're going to run into problems every day for a while now. That's going to be saying complete each comparison by using the correct comparison symbol. And when they see that, the toughest part for kids is remembering when they're talking about the words comparison symbol, they're just talking about less than, greater than, or equal to, right? So 43 compared to 34, 43 is greater than 34. The crocodile's mouth is opening up to the largest number. 112 compared to 121. Well, hopefully we know that 121 is the larger number. And reading left to right, it will read 112 is less than 121. Check out this one. 900 compared to 90. I don't think there's a fifth grader out there who doesn't know that 900 is greater than 90, correct? 80 compared to 80. It's the same number. 80 is equal to 80. Not too tough so far, right? Let's keep on moving on. Here we have one where it's going to say write each comparison using digits and a comparison symbol. Kids sometimes just get hung up on the terminology. We know that digits is just another word for numbers, right? We should know now comparison symbols, that's greater than, less than, or equal to. So let's see what we have here. 
25 is greater than 5. So I'm going to have to use digits or a comparison symbol to write 25. Well, I better use digits for that one, right? A 2 and a 5 is how we make 25. Is greater than. You want to use the greater than symbol and then 5. Use digits to make the 5, right? That's not too tough. The toughest part is the terminology used up here in the directions that kids sometimes trip on. Let's keep on going. Here is the same type of thing we're using comparison symbols and digits to express 13 is less than 30. So 13 in digits is just a 1 and a 3 is less than I better know how to do that. There is my less than because I read it left to right, correct? And then using digits again to write down 30. That would be a 3 and a 0 makes up the number 30. That would be a 3 and then a 0 to make up the number 30. 60 is equal to 60. Well, I'm going to use my digits. A 6 and a 0 to make 60. I'm going to use a comparison symbol to express is equal to. And then I'm going to use a 6 and a 0 again. More digits this time, correct? So another 6 and another 0. 60 is equal to 60. All right, so here it is again because this one kind of knocked us for a loop. And again, if you have a problem with this during the lesson, I'm just going to say take out your iPad and go watch this again. So here we have to go and write a rule, and it's not going to be necessarily a count up or a count down rule. Here they're saying to write a rule that describes, remember what I said, focus on how to find. Look where your arrow is going to go. We want to find the number of ladybugs. So here's the number of ladybugs. Here's the number of legs. We have to find the number of ladybugs for any number of legs which means we're starting with the legs and we want to know how to find the number of ladybugs. Starting with the four and ending up on eight. Or starting with eight and ending up on two. Or starting on twelve and ending up with three. What type of rule is that? And maybe you'd say, oh, it's a countdown by three, Mr. Hines. Yeah, four, if you count down three, will give you one. But eight count down three doesn't give you two. And twelve count down by three doesn't give you three. What is going on here? What are we doing? I think one person kind of got it this morning. What type of math is going on here? This is a divide problem. We are dividing by 4 this time. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 12 divided by 4 is 3. And so on and so on. So here's its companion piece. How many ladybugs are represented by 36 legs? So first of all, we got to again extend these numbers out. Here I'm just counting up by ones, right? So let's extend that out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Maybe I'll go eight. And what the heck, I have a little bit of room here, so I'm going to extend it out to nine. Maybe you'll have to extend out further. What's going on on the bottom row of numbers? 
4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. Looks to me like I am counting up by fours each time, right? So that would be 28. That would be 32, right? And then the last one would be 36. So, how many ladybugs are represented by 36 legs? When you have 36 legs, how many ladybugs do you have? And that answer would be nine. Again, you're going to have one of these almost every day for a month. So I'm hoping tomorrow went better than today. We'll find out, won't we? So that appears to be the end right now. You probably won't even need scratch paper and pencil for the Socrative quiz, but remember you got to get a passing grade and get cleared for takeoff before you start your lesson. Good luck.